Hi, everyone. I'm excited today to have the opportunity to introduce how First One is building the Metaverse Nash Box computing networks. Yeah, so first of all, like um, since early this year, everybody's talking about uh, Metaverse. So what is Metaverse? Uh, different people have a different definition. Some people see that it's an NFT. Some people see that uh, it is uh, some gaming characters. Then some people see that it's a film. But from my perspective, all of them are correct. So the, those are the images we already have in the different scenarios. The Atali, Atali the Battle Angel, the um, this one, the VR game, famous VR game, the, and also another gamer. So everything you can see is that they are building on top of the existing technology, but it's uh, something like it's going to happen, but not happening yet. People are so exciting about uh, everything, but uh, we still have uh, lots of steps moving to it. When you, as a nature person, and you want to go to the next stage of the gaming, what do you need? That is lots of technology happens behind it. Imagine that today you take a hit shot and now you, you hit set and you want to do, enjoy a different life. But now we already have moment science with your, with your phone. We already have lots of that's some kind of life was predefined by our environment. For example, the nationality, the um, your parents, your home, uh, you're born in a rich family or you are just in a normal family. You have a lot of things that cannot be controlled. But in this in metaverse, when you start from everything, lots of people can just start from scratch. You create your characters, you log in and you start enjoy your life. You can get a powerful weapons, you can get a different digital assets. You can build in your own, even your own kingdom in a virtual world. But it's still virtual, but it's not uh, virtual as well because something is really real there. It's a connection. In order to build in this metaverse, we need lots of power, which is we need the technology behind. We need the uh, Lots of people to connect to the from different devices. You maybe spam your cell phone, you maybe wear some sensors, you maybe need uh, some headset to watching to connect to those computing resources. But however, the current gaming about cloud gaming is you directly connect with uh, something like a stream platform or Google's Stadium platform. It's a remote gaming experience. For some of them, you need to download large data sets. You download a large of resource and uh, rendering on local compute, computer. After that, you just uh, access, upload your data set to the data center on different company owned. But it has one problem. How about this gaming company or those assets company, they change my asset. You can easily convert you me back from a uh, wealth people in the metaverse to a poor guy again, just deleted my role because he doesn't like me. You can also doing something like uh, you're in a region, you want to connect to the server like the Diablo 2 recent online, you're always on the queue where other people is happy playing the game. What happens to you? You really need lots of different places to access Instead, just the way on server, central server, server data centers, um, like Amazon, 20 data centers in the world, you need more than that. Another critical thing is uh, identity. In metaverse, we don't really want the current world, which is that uh, some company, you sign up with your account, your registration, and uh, you get an email validation, and uh, as soon as the game controller don't like you, the manager don't like you, you get to delete your role as a penalty. Something happens in Blizzard, 
in Ubisoft, lots of companies have done it. But why? Why should we have that? The user wallet should be the entry point to the metaverse. We create, anybody can create a wallet. And uh, this stand for me. My identity is just a piece of character. What it really represents me is the connections. It's not sort of not some ID by government. It's not some ID by central database. It is something validated by the blockchain consensus. As soon as I have the ID online, I have different transactions, connections with people you can define in the network. For example, I have a payment, use Ethereum, Bitcoin to somebody to buy the asset. Then the asset is online. My equipment is online. It's stored permanently on Firecoin storage. Now it permanently belongs to me, and nobody can delete it. And it's bonding with my identity, the, the wallet. So it belongs to me. I don't need a bank to authorize me to using my digital assets. I don't need a government to, to tell me that you are good or not. So this is something I think in the future metaverse we should have. Uh, in Firecoin, recently we already see that in the community there is a GitHub a repo talk about the interoperable ID standard. We can take a look. It is really interesting for the future. It can also integrate with other protocols like the loot. You can create the, the attributes for yourself and build your characters from scratch. Then for the Asset. The asset is important because that's all you have been working for and what you have. Like uh, you can have a car, you can have some nice skin, you can have unique weapons. All those things will be saved as NFTs. It's for you, it's unique. Even my daughter, she knows that when she has a cute cat, she doesn't want that his friend has the same one, right? It should be unique, it belongs to her. So with the uh, um, blockchain, we can do this. We have with the NFT storage recently online um, with Firecoin. Firecoin company uh, organization has this great community project to allow people upload their NFT asset to the Firecoin network. The chaining is recently working with Firecoin, so you can have your storage proof online to show that, yes, this is the assets have been stored and, uh, and it's confirmed. You can make a payment for that. We also have a lot of data set from Slingshot, which is, has over 30 petabytes, which enable people to download. It has a different source like a scientific data, and like uh, the gaming data, some medical data, for different purposes. Uh, those data sets are the essential part of the metaverse. Without data, you cannot build a real universe. Also, we need a decentralized computing power. Imagine like the scenario we just talked about uh, in the beginning. If you only have limited load, like what we have seen now in the lots of computer companies, they don't they only see that we only allow the users from North America goes to this region. We only allow the user from Europe to enter this game. The reason is simple. They don't have so many data centers, so they can only support some region, or because of regulations, uh, limitations, they cannot open it. How about a decentralized world? The decentralized should be free, that anybody can travel in or cross without a boundary. Then you really need the computing resource to distribute it across the world. So not like, like that nowadays, if you're using Amazon services, which means that you are agree with the Amazon user agreement, then if you have some service, Amazon decide not to provide the region, the entire region is down. You cannot let the people to continue the work in this region. So edge computing is very essential for the metaverse. We need uh, to let anybody to access the resource from any place, anywhere. The artificial intelligence and the 3D rendering technology requires lots of computing data. It's not just some database, uh, some data center that can solve problem. 
we have millions of computing resources can be used, especially for Firecoin. On the Firecoin network, currently, like we have over 700 storage nodes can be reached. And then we have more than 3,000 nodes, close to 4,000 nodes available globally. All those nodes have strong computing power. So what we are doing here, we are trying to bring the data and the computing power together to move the processing and analyze as close as possible on Web3. We already stored over 300,000 DLs on the Fracon network, which is over 400 terabyte storage data available. With the over one year effort since the launch of the mainnet, we started contact with different storage providers and ourselves the one of them as well. We're also building a community members of 100 developers currently actively working on building the new metaverse. On the technology point, we have lots of payment. We have lots of components used to support the entire infrastructure of the metaverse. We have a strong patch layer of IPFS also provide a S3 compatible SDK to bring the in existing industry into product network. For example, the gaming company, the AI company, and uh, some 3D image company, they really like uh, building existing infrastructure on S3 or good storage, we provide them an easy way to access to the product network. On the other hand, we're building a ledger services. The ledger services is uh, used for different uh, DAO system, either for payment or storage online proof or for some contracts. Different organizations, different uh, teams, they maybe need a contract to support their team, support their organization in the new metaverse. We also have a unified payment system to support a micro uh, Firecoin payment also support other blockchain payment as well. For example, the Polygon payment. And the reason is simple. In the metaverse, there will be lots of blockchains to go across our universe. They have a different kind of currencies. They have a different coin, different tokens. They want the exchanges. They want a decentralized way, a decentralized bank in the new metaverse. So. It's very important to have payment way. So we have a strong smart contract team kind of building different payment solutions for them. And the, then the most critical part is the edge computing. We're running the different container as a service to run in a 3D asset and uh, lots of computing neighboring network. The reason is simple. When you log into a new thing, when you have two people joining the battle or two people like uh, sitting in the cafeteria, you need to change the light, change the weather, climate, everything accordingly. Those all need a strong computing resource. And you also sometimes want your conversation to be encrypted, to be privacy protection, instead of like open to everybody. So you need this kind of computing. But you also want your data set with the computing close enough. So we are working with the Mac team to building the citizen access to all these different resources. So when you have traveling from one metaverse, one continent to another continent, you maybe want to cache in your storage, cache in your asset, transfer it to another continent. This is the, the FS3 component. Uh, it's enable people to just uh, doing the migration data from one place, from existing infrastructure, with one click. We can archive your storage by monthly, by daily, and you can retrieve it and then rebuild the storage as if you have a disaster happens with your local storage. And then we also have the Raptor to help you to convert in the S3, Google Drive, Azure support to make sure that uh, everything can be unified and stored 
on private network. Where we're building a global storage and the computing node discovery network. We have the building the dashboard to continuously connect with our storage providers. This is a screenshot they've taken by today. You can see that we have detected there are 330 storage providers and uh, the, the one we can have connections is 360. We also have some um, very, very active working with us provide their hobby. We know they are alive, they are online, they are actively respond to our request. And this is the one storage provider who is have a profile and tell what he can provide beyond just storage. He has a good bandwidth, and then we also give have a reputation system for them. So we know that uh, who is uh, perform well in the past and uh, who is not perform well. So the reputation will be your new ID in the metaverse. This is the auction market we have. We have three types of different bid for people to access. We have a public bid. If you have some data, want some people to serve it for you, you can open public bid. Or you already know some people has been there with you and you are really satisfied with their service. They don't need to go through a normal process. You can have a direct bid, which will allow you to direct send the storage to his node. We also have an auto bid. If you're a newcomer, you don't really want to spend much time to understand the system. So it's just supposed to be there. And uh, the reputation system will automatically provide the recommended high school storage provider for you. And then you also have a different option to set up the price range, the serving directions, and we're doing the marketing matching job for you. And we also help you to manage your process ongoing. Well, this is an uh, interesting feature uh, we have launched uh, last month. And then this is the most important part, the computing as a services. Um, the computing service will be ready early next year. Then you'll be able to archive, to get your archive data to the IPFS node. Then you can download the data set, start a training, with this demo examples, we give people a direct feeling about how can they uh, get a set of different monkeys and uh, recognize the uh, huazi from which species. So in metaverse, you don't really need to remember so much thing, so much knowledge, because as soon as you enter it, it will automatically labeling different articles, different uh, objects for you. Even though it's something you never know, they don't need to worry about that. And it's not in data saved in some database. It can be real-time recognition for you, which is really amazing. We're also working with a lot of different projects. And uh, we also get the support from Canadian government, from NVIDIA, and also Fricon Plus, different organizations. It's a really interesting work. And uh, yeah. For people who is interested to working with us, you can go to our website and join our Slack. And you can also check our GitHub repo. We have everything there and uh, we are really working for you. Thanks everyone.